So I've always appreciated the Great Fire, not because of the tragedy, but because it was a necessary element, among other things, to show that you can't always get what you want. And I got to thinking, a lot of things don't happen when that fire doesn't occur. And here's what I mean. Kire, for example, doesn't become a true villain. The conclusion of his understanding, the back and forth that he had between Gil, all of that comes full circle with the involvement of the fire. Without it, he doesn't become a villain, at least right away. He never never gets bathed in the grail mud which means that he never got a fake heart Gil doesn't get the treatment either it's crazy to think about considering that there's such heavy components antagonists for the entirety of stay night so Gil never got his body meaning that he disappeared along with everybody else and pretty much leaving Zoken as an antagonist on his own if you hear me smacking I apologize this Chinese is bussing here's another crazy thing Shiro doesn't become the main character without the fire there's no trauma there's no survivor's guilt there's no kids under the church he has no ordinary ties to magecraft which means that his projections would go out the window he'd be an entirely different character remember the whole reason that he can project on that level is because kirisugu put avalon inside of him as a child giving him the unique affinity to swords now it's no kirisugu no avalon so between these two characters alone here's a weird canon we already have the fact that shiro admitted that he liked kira in heaven feel and in a different world they probably could have been friends well here's a different world somehow some way maybe Shiro ends up going to the church and working alongside Kire. now you do have the addendum that still has to be addressed the implication that FGO made years later of Shiro being a descendant of Muramasa so he would still have his title weaponry it just wouldn't be the same as what it was I'm thinking he would be some sort of super blacksmith on the level of Hephaestus in the human world where he makes these super weapons for the church you know they need that anyway especially if you see the things that CL's using and how they came together with that he probably can make something even better if you consider Muramasa's blade and all of his conceptual hacks that alone will still make him stand tall as a character who else Ren I appreciate the relationship that she had with Shiro because I feel like they reflect and bounce off each other in many ways. I think that Shiro is that one piece of humanity that Ren really needed throughout her life since she was growing up in a house by herself and she lost all of her family and she's literally being raised by a psychopath. I think Shiro was that necessary wedge to create a balance. In this case, they wouldn't nurture the same bond that they had throughout the story. As a matter of fact, with him being in the church they might even be enemies without them growing up together being side by side like they were you know he even went to the clock tower with her she would lean towards being a lot more of a traditional mage you know real cold-hearted it wasn't that bad before but after being on her own for so long even going all the way to the mages association I feel like that would change and speaking of change what happens to her after that it's really hard to say like I said before with Shiro's whole dynamic changing Emya wouldn't exist there'd be no reason for him to make the pack so Emya wouldn't even come around so she would have a completely different servant Saber would also have a different master her catalyst was Avalon so it would have to be either somebody that had a better connection to her or they just so happened to recover Kirisugu's lost Avalon after he passed away however that would happen because I'm sure he would keep it hidden the only person person that would have a realistic chance of discovering it is really Taiga. Imagine Taiga, Jaguar Man being a master. I can see the trolls now, but without the aptitude for her being an actual mage, she might end up like Ryanosuke, which is something that I really don't want to see. Now all the things that would have happened to Ilya still happens. She's still going to participate in the war. She's still going to have Heracles. She's not going to have her rivalry with Shiro, however, because he was never taken taken into the household so they're not going to be siblings and he's not even going to be on her mind but they probably are going to run into each other that's weird as well yo without that fire the whole story falls apart that's so strange i can't imagine them not being together it's like all the people that were once working aside one another are now enemies by default then there's sakura it would be the same as ren without him being there to keep her steady she would just lose it except she would lose it way faster than she did before i 
see a lot of people give her flack for her position in the story, I think she did a great job at holding it together because most people would have broke way sooner. You think Sakura is insane now? Wait till you see the version where Cheryl isn't around, where she just has to deal with what she has going on on her own. We just got the light version. You gotta think, majority of her downtime was chilling at Cheryl's house and getting away from all the problems she had at home. Now she has no downtime. It's school, Shinji, and Zoken, and that's her whole life. That would make anybody go insane. I don't feel like Shinji would make a change. The only thing that I feel like would be different with Shinji is that he would just die sooner because she's putting up with a lot less this time around. So he tried to do what he did in the story and all of a sudden he just come up missing. The way that his character works, it would have to be an actual writing point for him to change. It's not like everybody else. I don't think moving the things around him would make him respond differently. And again for Ren, I do believe that she would still go on to be one of the top mages at the association as planned she will be way stronger than she was before she probably have a lot of people gunning for her head superior genes better studied better looking she's got ties to zell rich yeah they wouldn't like her most of the people up there at a certain point in time probably wouldn't even be able to hold a candle to her i wouldn't be surprised if she just became a professor Oh, you thought I forgot? Bazed with the hands? She would still be around because the whole thing about her going down was a part of Kirei's arc of discovering his inner evil. So she's still in the mix. She still gets to keep cool. And you know what that means? That's free wins. GG's, buddy. She's truck sticking through everybody. And she got cool too with no restraints. You know what? Skip Ren being a professor. I need her to train under Bazette and become an enforcer, master her martial arts so they can be one of the best tag team duos since Euro Kobe. It's only right. I mean, somebody's got to take their spot now that Gil's gone. Who else is going to do it? Here's the big part, the birth of Angramayu, the end of Heaven's Field. Without the natural cast banding together to stop his birth like they did in the original story, it would pretty much be what Nasu spoke about in the interview. Angra will be born, he would flood half of the earth, and we go on to see one of the greatest battles since Zell Wretch and the Crimson Moon. Again, a huge part of her stopping Sakura was her being with Shiro, him projecting the gem sword, them working together to get Saber Altar out the way, all these different things and now Sakura is free to do whatever she wants. Zoken gets what he wants, it'd be a mess. I feel like he would still go down anyway because that's the only thematically sound way for him to go out but he's gonna get a lot more accomplished before that happens. Pretty much everything else would remain the same unless of course it's being altered through the writing itself. What it does do is give room for new plot lines, characters that were heroes to become antagonists and vice versa, and hidden potentials for characters that we didn't get to see before. It's essentially a whole new route. The only thing that's really getting altered is everything that happens after Saber uses her noble phantasm on the grail. So what do you even call that? Is that a good ending? It's kind of ironic if you consider that if the fire doesn't happen, then Angra is born fully. You can't even really call it a good ending, ultimately that's worse. We'll just say this is the alternate ending.